pray. Amen. And amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to praise the Lord. I'm ready to lift up Jesus. Let's get ready to praise him. Lift up your hands. Get off your couch. Let's praise the Lord. I'm super excited and really just mostly like um, thankful for the revival we just had and the praise and worship. I just want to thank God for everything he's poured out in our lives um, over the last four or five days in this revival. It's been so good. 
And one of the main messages that really stuck with me was that if you don't have any salt or any savor, then you can't do anything for God. And I don't want to be like that. I want to be a child of God that is salted by his fire. That the spirit inside of me comes alive every time a message comes forth because I know those new levels waiting for me that I don't have yet, that I haven't seen yet. I don't care if I've read a verse or heard a message 30 times. I know that there is deeper levels still waiting for me that have not been discovered yet. And I'm tired of the simple and basic stuff. God, I want something deep.
God, I won't lose my passion just because revival's ended. I won't lose my fervor just because it's over. I'm so desperate for you that we can have revival every single night in my room if you want to. You can bring your spirit every night if you want to in my room. And I will invite your Holy Ghost to have its way for the rest of my life. Because one thing I've desired for all of my life, and that is to dwell in the house of the Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I am excited about what God is doing today. I want you to know I'm very excited. We're getting ready to, uh, according to our governor of our state and the mayor of our city, we should be able to open service next week, next Sunday. So we're excited about that. Now, we're going to do just what we did when we opened. We shut down in a phase, and we're going to open the same way in a phase. First thing we're going to do is next Sunday we're going to open. And anybody that, uh, if, you, if you're an elderly person or someone with underlying health conditions or someone not feeling well, we're going to ask you to please stay home for this first Sunday opening. And then, of course, on Mother's Day, we're going to have a full opening. Everybody welcome to come. So we're very, very excited about that. So get ready. The club is about to open the doors, and we want you there. Amen. Now, there is something you can do for the club today on April the 26th. If you go to Johnny's right here in Moore, Oklahoma, Johnny's, uh, drive in here in Moore, Oklahoma, and order your drive through food, tell them you're with Revival for Christ Club. And a portion of everything you spend will go to our missions fund and to help minister to our friends in RFC Asia. It helps take care of some of our plane tickets for our missionaries to go over there. So if you want to help out the mission field, go get you a burger from Johnny's today. Tell them you're with Revival for Christ. And you'll get a special blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for tuning us in today. We've got a great program in store for you. Going to get more into the salt message. Today, Lord willing, we might talk about a little sweet savor. So stick around. But anyway, right now, here they are. The fire, RFC Fire Angel Dancers going to do this very special dance just for you. God bless. For a miracle, the heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. A child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from a sea of hurt. Oh,
What a beautiful dance, that Laura Daigle song. It is such a blessing when they get up and they share their testimony and dance and praise and worship to the Lord. Right now, I'll tell you what, I've got a good friend out there uh, that is facing, uh, hey, got some good bad news today, not good news. And so we're going to pray with him today. I want you to join with me in prayer today. My good friend Ryan out there got some news from the doctor today. And how many of you know our God is a healer? Our God is a restorer. Bible says by his stripes we are healed. I want you to join with me and help me lift up my friend Ryan as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer. I also want you, anybody out there, if you're facing some kind of affliction, you're facing a sickness in your body today, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the restorer. Jesus Christ is the healer. All you have to do is believe. All you have to do is say, Lord, I believe in your word. I believe in your spirit. I believe in your anointing. Dear Heavenly Father, God, right now as I lift up my friend Ryan, God, I pray that you will reach across the screen right now and touch my friend Ryan from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. The devil, you are a liar and the father of it. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the world says. What I care about is what Jesus can do. I don't care what the doctor says. That's just a challenge for Jesus to show how powerful and how mighty he is. God, right now I ask you to touch my brother Ryan. God, bring healing into his body. God, complete and absolute healing. Lord, for everyone that's watching this program today that needs a touch in their body, a devil, you are a liar and the father of it. Holy Ghost, touch them right now. Bring healing and restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and we believe it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We're believing God for a good report. We're believing God that something special is happening in your life right now. Right now, I want you to please welcome our very special guest. We're happy to have her back up and singing and, and, and ministering for us. She sung during the revival, and she's here to do a very special song for you right now. Please welcome our praise leader, the lovely and beautiful Tasha Sanders. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. On each face And I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord Sweet Holy With your love And for these blessings We lift our hearts in praise Without a doubt we'll know That we have been revived when we shall leave this place There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place of the Lord 
There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. Sweet. Come here, Tasha. Praise the Lord. I love you. God bless you. That's awesome. I wish he could sing, don't you? Praise the Lord. Amen. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. All right, let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer as we change the order of the service. Get right into the word on this beautiful Sunday morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as we come before you, God, we come not in our own ability nor by our own power, but God, we come by your spirit, your anointing, and your authority. God, I ask you, Father, to give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart of comprehension, God. Let your word come forth today, God, with clarity, preciseness, anointing, and with power. God, we're not here to exalt and lift up anyone else except Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, and our Heavenly Father, the great I Am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. Father, right now, loose your anointing, loose your illumination, loose your spirit. Spirit upon this word, God. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get ready to get right in our Bibles. We're going to get right to it. Go over to 2 Corinthians. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians in chapter 2. Now, while you're headed there, I want you to know as we finished off April Celebration Revival on Wednesday, I got into salt part two, talking a little bit more about the salt. Uh, uh, spiritually anointed living truth. Walking, living, and abiding in that spiritually anointed living truth. That's what we need operation in our life. We're going to continue on with the salt a little bit, but now we're going to take it in to the savor. What does it mean to be that savor? What does it mean to have that savor? What does it mean to have that anointed flavor? What does it mean to have that Holy Ghost in, uh, injection? What does it mean to have the Holy Ghost bring bringing illumination, bringing understanding, and causing the Word to come alive right before your very eyes. Amen? Go with me, if you would, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. I give God all the praise, honor, and glory. Anything good, it's Him. Amen? Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, or 2, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to start reading in the 14th verse of chapter 2. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory. And uh, through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God, what? Everywhere. I want you to look what he says right there. Look what he says there. He says, God, thanks be unto God, Christ always is triumphant. He said Christ doesn't fail. Christ doesn't, uh, doesn't have any failure in him. He's always got triumph. There's always triumph in Christ. And the trophies of Christ are demonstrated in your life. Every triumph that happens in your life, every victory that you have in your life, there is a change. There is a transformation. There is an ability for you to manifest 
more wisdom, more knowledge, and more understanding than you had before. Remember Moses. Bible said when Moses went before the burning bush, said the voice of God spoke out to him and told him to take off his shoes for he's standing on holy ground. And the Bible says when Moses came back to his village, came back to his people, came back to his wife, they didn't recognize him at first because his countenance had changed. His countenance was different than when he left. That is something that we need in the church today. We need a countenance change. We need a radiance change. Oh, you're not listening to me. We need a new fragrance in the nose of God. We need a new opportunity to be a sweet-smelling savior before our Heavenly Father. Amen? Go on, man. See what he says. He says, Christ's victory, and through us, he spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. For we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which exhales unto God, discernible alike among those who are being saved and among those who who are perishing. Now I want you to look what he said. In the King James it says, and I want you to get a hold of this. He says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and them that are perishing. Now I want to explain to you what he's talking about here. He said it is time for the sweet savor of Christ's knowledge to be demonstrated in the hearts and minds of God's people. It's time for everyone we come in contact with, the saved and the unsaved, that they begin to acknowledge and realize the sweet savor that is flowing out of us. That sweet knowledge of revelation that sweet understanding and wisdom that fragrance when someone encounters you would they say you have a fragrance of knowledge or would they say you have a memorization of what people have taught you see I'm not talking about you memorizing I'm not talking about you copying. I'm not talking about you duplicating. I'm talking about a real manifestation. I'm talking about a real transformation. I'm talking about the ability for transformation to take place in a spiritually organic fashion from the inside out. It happens because of experience. When you experience the presence of God, when you encounter God, when you move into God's anointing, there is going to be a change. There always is. There always will be a change. You see, the desire of the Lord is not, hear me now, the desire of the Lord is not that we build kingdoms unto ourselves. The plan of the Lord is not for us to exalt and lift up ourselves or to exalt and lift up our particular denomination or exalt and lift up our particular base of operations. What God wants us to do, what God wants us to realize is that our encounter with Him is priceless. Our encounter with Him is more important than any of that. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where God's got your base. What matters is what is the substance that is in your heart. What is the substance you are standing on? What is the spiritual revelation, understanding, and knowledge you are operating by? What are you operating he said knowledge. Look at that. He said the savor of his knowledge. See, when you get salted with fire, when you get salted with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, when you get exalted and the fire begins to ignite, it brings fruitful insight into revelational 
excellency. It begins to illuminate and show you how the Word and the Spirit of God come together in equal measure. And as they do, they establish truth. In that established truth comes forth revelation. Now as you begin to embrace and apply the revelation, knowledge is released. Oh, y'all might listen to me. Knowledge is released. How can I have knowledge about what it takes to be transformed? How can I have knowledge about what it means to manifest his word, to manifest his spirit? If it's never happened, if I've never had a transformation, if I've never had a manifestation, how can I speak to you about what transformation is? How can I speak to you about what manifestation is? See, when you accept it, you apply it, that's the beginning. Knowledge begins to be established. Because see, now you understand how to bring your flesh under subjection. Now you understand that you have to follow the Spirit of God. As many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're going to be a son and daughter of God, you've got to begin to follow His Spirit. If you're going to be a son and daughter of God, you've got to begin to understand only when the fragrance of knowledge is flowing through you. Is there an indication that maybe you've been salted with fire? Can you say praise God? You see, here's the thing. When knowledge begins to rise up, what, what establishes knowledge? The ability to have an intellectual understanding of something you did not previously understand. Something you, you, you may have thought you knew. Something you may have assumed you knew. Something maybe someone else told you about and told you they knew. But it's only an encounter. Oh, you're not listening to me, church. It's only an encounter that knowledge is established. It's only when you have an encounter that knowledge begins to rise forth out of you. You need knowledge. You need it in your life. You need to be operating by it. But in order for it to happen, you've got to transform. You've got to manifest. And then you've got to encounter Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. See, first, you got to start getting hold of that spiritually anointed living truth. Then, when you get salted with fire, you have fruitful insight into revelational excellency. And it says you begin to understand this is the Word of God. This is the revelation of God. This is is the understanding of God. I will apply them. I will embrace them. I will walk in them. And as you're going out through the day, all of a sudden, you encounter a situation. You encounter a circumstance. And you stop. And all of a sudden, that image and that nature begins to rise up in you. Instead of handling it the way you used to handle it, now, you let Holy Ghost take over. You say, God, I'm not going to operate by what I think. I'm not going to operate by the way I used to do things. But I'm now going to let the fragrance of your knowledge flow out of me. The fragrance of your knowledge permeate up the air. Fill up the nostrils of all those who are hungry, all those lions who are ravenous, all those who want to get a hold and say, man, I know the word of God is more to me than words on a page. I want the fire, the anointing, and the power of God to be released back into the body of Christ. I want to rise up and let his knowledge become a mighty fragrance to me. Huh? We got to hurry. Now, here's something I thought interesting. He said, it maketh manifest. That means they're going to see it. Manifest means outwardly. The savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Every situation, every circumstance we're in. If we're being led by the Spirit, if we're becoming sons and daughters of God, the fragrance of his knowledge will flow through us in everything we do. Whether it's counseling, 
whether it's praying, whether it's ministering, whether it's testifying, whether it's going to work, whether it's coming home making dinner for our family, whatever it is, his knowledge can come alive in you. His knowledge can flow through you. But it requires encounter. It requires experience. It requires you have to do more than just go to church and sit on a pew. You have to do more than just occupy a church that covers an acre of land. You've got to rise up out of that pew and become the man and woman that God called you to be. It's time to rise up and let the Word and the Spirit of God begin to assemble in you that image and nature of Christ where His knowledge is released in everything you do. In everything you do. Now he said, for those that love God and for those that don't love God, when this knowledge is distributed, when this knowledge becomes a savor coming forth out of you, it says to the one, we are the savor of death. Unto death and to the other, the savor of life. Unto life. And who is sufficient For all these things. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. But as, the, but as of sincerity, but as of God and in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. You need to understand the power of the statement that Paul is making to the church of Corinth at this time. He said, don't be surprised that those that don't love God, don't be surprised that those that are on the road to perish, those that are on the road to damnation are not going to appreciate the knowledge in you. They're not going to appreciate the light in you. Don't be surprised if those who are not walking on the path of God are going to become angry at what you're doing, angry at what's flowing out of you. Because every time that life comes out of you, every time that anointing begins to flow through you, they are reminded of what they do not have. They are reminded that the only path for me is death. The only path for me is death. The more that brother operates in the knowledge of God, the more I realize I ain't got it. The more he walks in it, the more he lives in it, the more I understand and comprehend. I don't have it. But I need it. I don't got it, but I need it. Can you say praise the Lord? Now, I like what he says here. He says to those that are on the road to perish, we appear as death because they ain't got it. But to those who love the Lord, those who are on the road to life, those who are hungry for the spiritual revelational things of God, those that are looking for the excellency of Christ Jesus our Lord, they love the savor of knowledge. They love to see that you've got God's knowledge operating and moving in you, that your thoughts are not your own, that you didn't speak what you thought, you didn't walk by what you did, but you humbled yourself to the Spirit of God, and everything you spoke was by the Spirit of God. Ooh, somebody say amen. Now, I like this part, he says. So good. And who is sufficient for these things? We are not as many who corrupt the Word of God. I want you to listen. You saw me a couple weeks back, I think it's April 8th or 10th. I spoke on the two different words. W-O-R-D here, W-O-R-D here. The wisdom of religious doctrine. The wisdom of righteous doctrine. When we're preaching this word over here, when we're working to perfect people in religion, when we're working to make people look holy and righteous on the outside, but there's no change inside, honey, all we're doing is decorating the sepulchers of dead men's bones. All we're doing, because inside is nothing but death. Inside is nothing but dead men's bones. But I got news for you. There's a message going forth of power and authority that is going to reach into the heart and soul of man that is going to cause a dynamic encounter to incur between man and God. And when that happens, you're going to change. When that happens, the fragrance of his knowledge is going to begin to flow. 
Let's go and look what he says here. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, wisdom of religious doctrine, but as the sincerity, wisdom of righteous doctrine, but as of God. Now in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. I want you to look what he says to the whole encounter. It's about sincerity. It's about honesty. It's about being real with God. Oh, Sataramani see. I want you to understand something. <clears throat> it's not all the show and the go. What it is, is real. It's sincere and it's honest. You see, you wonder why I get so excited. Well, I shout and I run. I get excited. It's because the word of God is so real to me. The word of God is so alive to me that when I breathe it in, it ignites, excites, releases the power of God. And I have no other way of expression. This is my way of passionate expression for the God that I serve. Let me tell you something. I remember back in the old rock and roll days, people said they couldn't stand still. The music made a move. Elvis said he had to move because of the music. Well, I got to move because of the Holy Ghost. I can't help it. Spirit of God is on me. I can't help it. I get excited about God. I got to let him fly through my heart. Amen? And he tells you here, for we not as many which corrupt the word. He said, we don't corrupt this word. And how do we keep the word of God from being corrupted? How do we stop the word of God, the wisdom of righteous doctrine, turning into the wisdom of religious doctrine? How do we guard that? He tells us right here. But as of sincerity, but as of God and in the sight of God. I want you to look what he's saying. Now, let's remember something about God. What does the Bible say about God? What did Jesus tell the woman at the well? He said God is a, I'm sorry, God is a spirit. Who said that? Jesus Christ said that. He said that to the woman. He said God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now what he's talking about right here, when the word of God is coming forth in you, when you are ministering, preaching, delivering, teaching, prophesying the word of God, it has to have a certain amount of spiritual consistency, an element to it. Amen? One of the things is sincerity. That what you do, you don't do for glory. What you do, you don't do for fame. What you do, you do because you're willing to sacrifice everything that you are and all that you are to embrace who he called you to be, who he wants you to be. See, when we speak the wisdom of righteous doctrine, we speak it because of experience, because of encounter. See, I'm not speaking to you this morning off of what somebody else told me. I'm not speaking to you this morning off of what I read from somebody else. I'm speaking to you this morning off of what I personally have experienced when I was in the presence of God, when I was under the anointing of God, the things God showed me, the things God placed in me. Oh, somebody ought to be able to share. Jesus said, I don't think anybody wants to argue with Jesus. Jesus spoke about his own father. And he said, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. That's why it makes sense. But as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God. He said, listen, when it comes to sincerity, it's not the sincerity that we build in ourselves. It's not the sincerity created by our flesh. It's the sincerity created by relationship with your heavenly father that encounter causes change it's in that moment of encounter that sincerity and honesty 
is defined. It's in the moment of that encounter that the radiance of the anointing, the radiance of the spirit that lives and dwells inside of you can begin to be fed. It can begin to increase and it increases to the point where it becomes a savor, a fragrance, a taste, a flavor of God's anointing, of God's word. I like what he said. Remember, God is the spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he says, but as the sincerity, but as of God. Replace that word God with spirit. As of spirit in the sight of God's spirit. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. The one element that is essential for this puzzle to work. The one element that is essential for the fragrance of knowledge to work in you is the inclusion of the Holy Ghost, is the inclusion of the Spirit of God. You have got to have that Spirit of God to bring illumination. You've got to have that Spirit of God to bring revelation. You've got to have that Spirit of God to apply this Word and put it into operation. Can you say praise God? And then what did he say? I love this. See, this is Paul putting it in there. He said, but as sincerity, but as of God, God is a spirit. They that worship must worship the spirit and truth. So by the spirit, in the sight of God, God is a spirit. They that worship must worship the spirit and truth. He's looking spiritually. Amen. And then what's the last thing he says? Speak we in what? Speak we in what? Speak we in what? Why did Paul say that? He said, what we speak, we speak in Christ. What we speak, we don't speak in Paul's name. What we speak, we don't speak in Apollos' name. What we speak, we don't speak in Peter's name or John's name or James' name. What we speak, we speak in Christ. But why? Why? Perhaps it's John that says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit And they are alive. You do not know my speech. Even because you cannot hear my words. We need to understand something. There needs to be a revelational transformation of the body of Christ in this next century. We need to change into creatures that are more sensitive to the anointing. Creatures that move by the breath of God. Creatures that allow the flame, the fire, and the fragrance of God to explode in us. I will tell you what the next stage is. I will tell you what the next level is. Intimate encounter. You need more intimacy with your heavenly father. You need more honesty and more sincerity and more of saying, God, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. I got to read this one time in the Amplified because I like something the Amplified says here. It says in verse 17, uh, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and 17. For we are not like so many, like hucksters making a trade of, peddling God's word, shortchanging and adultering the divine message, but like men of sincerity and of the purest motive. As commissioned and sent by God, we speak his message in Christ the Messiah, in the very sight and the presence of God. How can you speak about Jesus when you've never spent any time in God's presence? Oh, you're not listening to me. How can you talk about Jesus? How can you talk about your heavenly father when you've never spent any time in his presence? Oh, you've studied this book and you've studied that book and you've read this and you've read that. I got nothing against reading, but I want an encounter. I got nothing against reading, but I need an intimate encounter with my God. I need to enter into the presence of God and allow God to release his knowledge and his wisdom forth out of me. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make some people mad, but you'll get glad again. Amen? You understand this. For too long, for too long in the Christian quote, quote, world, we spent more time merchandising the gospel, selling it to the highest bidder, 
than delivering it with the freedom that his blood intended. Oh, you're not listening to me. Speaking the word of God with the freedom that his blood intended. Let me tell you something. I'm not here for a payday. Let me tell you something. I'm not here for fame and glory. I'm here because of the spirit. I'm here because of the anointing of God. I'm here because I had an encounter. And I want to share the knowledge of that encounter with you. So that you too can have an encounter. See, let me tell you something. I don't have to make up nothing about God. I don't make up nothing about Jesus. I don't make up nothing about the Holy Ghost. I know from experience. I don't make it up. Amen. I don't make it up. I don't got to prove nothing to nobody. I know for a shadow without a shadow of a doubt. I know for a fact the power, the excellency, the glory of a real living God. I want you to know it. I want you to walk in it too. Ooh, God's good. So we see by God, through God, in God, to God. Right? He keeps the pipes clean. He keeps the pollution out. Because it has to be from God, through God by His Spirit, accessed by Jesus Christ, and returned back as praise and worship to our Heavenly Father. Can you say Amen. Woo, somebody get excited. I'm excited. Somebody ought to praise the Lord. All right, let's go on. I want you to go with me, if you would, please, to Ephesians. Not very far from where you're at. Ephesians chapter 5. Woo. Man, you got to get salted by some fire. Yeah. Salted with fire. And you're flying on. Amen. Let's go on. We're in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, I'm going to read out of the King James to start with. Ephesians 5 and 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. For a what? Sweet-smelling savor. What kind of savor are we supposed to be? A sweet-smelling savor. Do you think that we become a sweet smelling, smelling savor to God when we make justification for our flesh? Do you think we become a sweet smelling savor to God when we're still doing the things of our carnality? We're still yielding to our flesh? Or do you think we become a sweet smelling savor to God when we wring our flesh under subjection and we say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Holy Spirit, lead me. And as I am led, I become a son and daughter of God. Amen. Would you look what he said? Be therefore followers of God as dear children. You're supposed to walk in love, love of Christ. Also hath loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanliness and covetousness, let not at once be named against you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. This passage of Scripture shows me one thing. This scrap, uh, passage of Scripture teaches me something right off the bat. You know what it teaches me? Either you're a sweet-smelling savor to God or you're death. You're one or the other, amen? Either you're a sweet-smelling savor to God or He smells your flesh. Honey, let me tell you something. You can't become a sweet savor to God unless you're willing to sacrifice your flesh, unless you're willing to bring your flesh under subjection, unless you're willing to bring your mind under subjection. To the Spirit of God. I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Until you say, Lord, I surrender. Until you sacrifice hold of this flesh man. Instead, until you stop trying to hang on to your life, but you become willing to lay it down, 
then you'll find it. Then you'll truly get a hold of it. Then you'll truly embrace it. Amen? See, here's the key. Here's the key. God set it up. Well, you're not going to manifest his image. You're not going to really reach the hearts of his people. You're not really going to stir them up if you don't have a sweet savor coming from your vessel. Oh, y'all aren't listening to me. The sweet savor is only released after a dynamic encounter. In the dynamic encounter comes the release of the sweet savor. Because now you have flushed out the elements of destruction. You have flushed out your flesh. And you stand in the spirit of God. Sweet savor. Huh. Sweet is spelled... S-W-E-E-T. And savor, S-A-V-O-R. Sweet savor. And I began to look at that and I began to think about that. And I said, God, it's the dynamic encounter that releases the sweet savor. Then I become something that is pleasing in the sight of God. Something that when I speak and when I minister, I speak not and minister by my own intelligence or by my own ability, but I speak by the mouth of God. I speak as the breath of God breathes on me. Amen? Let's go on. Sweet. S-W-E-E-T. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He said, son, listen to me. I said, yes, Lord. He said, there can be no release of savor without sacrifice. Jesus had to sacrifice to release the savor. Oh, y'all aren't getting this. He sacrificed to release the savor that no longer would you do the work of God in your own hands. But from this day forward, would the hands of God work through you? From this day forward, would the hands of God move in you? No longer would you walk in your own path. But from this day forward... The Lord's word will become a lamp unto your path. It would show you the master's anointed plan. It would lead you in the anointed master's plan. No longer are you held captive by the carnal mind and the mind of lust and flesh. But you can let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And last but not least, let the word and the spirit flow out of you. That it may minister and touch and change other people. The Lord told me, said, Timothy, there can be no savor without sacrifice. And then he said, the sacrifice has no power unless it's willing. Oh, y'all don't listen to me. He said the sacrifice does not have the same power unless it's willing. He said when Jesus went down that hill, when Jesus went on that cross, he was willingly laying down his life, willingly sacrificing so that the sweet savor could be released. So he said, there's got to be sacrifice and there's got to be willing. And then once the sacrifice has been willing and the flesh falls and the spiritual man rises, you have to embrace. Come on, y'all ain't getting hold. You have to embrace it. Have to embrace it. What is it that you're embracing? What is it that you're embracing? What did Paul say? He said, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He said, I count them all but dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Don't you understand? When the flesh falls and the spirit rises and the revelation comes forth, what is he showing you? The excellency of Jesus Christ. I like that word. Excellent Jesus. There ain't nothing he is but excellent. He's excellent all the time. And then he said, son, always, all things established in the truth. Can you say praise God? Say amen, Lord. Amen, Lord. Sacrifice willingly. Then we have to embrace his excellency. We have to live and operate in truth, right? Isn't that right? So S-W-E-E-T. Sacrificing willingly to embrace excellent truth. 
There it is. S-W-E-E-T. There it is right there what God said. He said you are sacrificing willingly to embrace excellent truth so the Savior will be released. Savior is spelled S-A-V-O-R. Saved, anointed, with victorious, overcoming righteousness. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. Righteousness. Don't you understand that as the sweetness takes hold, the Savior is released. As the Savior is released, it declares that you are saved, you are anointed, and you are victoriously overcoming through your right standing with God. Your righteousness with God. Are you willing? When's the last time you said, God, I'll put aside my schedule for you? When's the last time you said, Lord, it's not what I want, but it's what you want. God, it's not what I desire, but it's what you desire. Oh, man. Don't you think it's time, church? Don't you think it's time we begin to sacrifice those things that bring distraction? We begin to sacrifice those things that hinder us. We begin to sacrifice those things that keep us from that powerful encounter with God, that personal, intimate encounter with God. You need that encounter. You need it now. You need to say, God, bring my flesh under subjection. Release the anointing within me. Sacrifice willingly. And then embrace the excellent truth you're hearing this morning. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in to Revival for Christ Club this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. Whew, I pray something that I preach to you has been a blessing of some kind. I pray that it's encouraged you and strengthened you. My only go, I want you to know what it feels like to have his savor flowing out of you. When you're faced with circumstances and situations, being able to rely on the savor of that knowledge to know what to do, what to say, how to go, where to go. Cry out to the Lord now and say, God, I want your sweet savor. God, I want that dynamic encounter. I want to know you like I've never known you before. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to the end of this pandemic. You'll be released from your homes soon. But when you do, will it be like it was before? Or will you come forward and be everything God called you to be? Will you say the time for twilling my thumbs, the time for twinkling my toes in the river's over? It's time to jump in with both feet. It's time to be consumed by the fire and the anointing and the word of God. It's time to rise to the calling God intended for me. I love you. Let me pray with you, my brother and sister, my friend. Dear Heavenly Father, God, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who does not know you as Lord and Savior, I ask you to begin to move on their heart now. Let them confess with their mouth before you, God, that they are sinners, but that you are Lord and King, and they want you in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you need prayer this morning, our prayer lines are open. 405-793-1770. If you need prayer right now, there's a prayer where you're standing by ready to pray with you, ready to minister. One more time, 405-793-1777. We love you. God bless you. I'm going to go out here and minister. We've got a few folks in the building. I'm going to minister to them. As I do, here comes our administrative vice president, Brother Ryan Colley. First of all, I want to say how much I appreciate and thank all of you who have been supporting us during this hard time. Without your support, we wouldn't make it. So thank you so much for that. And... Uh, if you got anything out of this message, you don't owe me anything. But you owe Jesus your life. Live it for him. Be what he's called you to be. Here you go, Ryan. Praise the Lord. What an awesome, awesome word from God. I want to be that sweet saver. Amen. If you would like to uh, give to what God is doing here at Revival for Christ, uh, please, uh, you can call in 405 793 one seven seven seven. That's four zero five seven nine three one seven seven seven. Frank's going to be back there taking your calls. If, if you uh, 
I want to, you can also come up, bring it up uh, during the week, or you can mail it in to 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore. That's 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore. Or, uh, technology-wise, you can go to Cash App, and it's uh, money sign RFC Roar. That's R-O-A-R. That's money sign RFC R-O-A-R. Are. Guys, we thank you so much, and whenever you do that, make sure you tell what it's for. If you, you can give towards the uh, pledges, tithes, offerings, pledges. We have our birthday pledge. It's $82. For that's our RFC birthday pledges. We uh, save all those up, and then we buy something special for the church. Um, in years past, we've uh, got vacuum cleaners and different things like that. So, But uh, thank you guys so much. Also remember, when you go get lunch today or even dinner tonight, tell them that you're with Revival for Christ at Johnny's uh, here and more, and a portion of what you spend will go towards our uh, RFC missions. So let's, uh, let's all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for this service. God, we thank you for our apostle that brought forth the bread of life. God, we want to beat that sweet savor, God. And Lord, I pray for everybody that's listening right now, wherever they're at. God, let them feel your spirit. Let them feel encouraged. And let them feel the peace that passes all understanding, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Lift them up. Satan, ha, 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 you are defeated, and Jesus is Lord, and it couldn't be any other way. Remember, you are the united sons and daughters of God. Go out and kick the devil around. Tell somebody Jesus is Lord. We love you.